Okay, in this video we're going to do a rather advanced proof on how to prove that um, two lines that are perpendicular, perpendicular on a Cartesian plane also have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. So what is meant by that um, slope um, denoted as m generally, that means that um, m1, maybe a uh, slope of k here, line k is m1, uh, multiplied by m2, maybe that's the slope of line l, is going to be equal to negative 1. So if the slope of line k, again this is just arbitrary, if the slope of line k was negative 1 half, then the slope of line l would have to be 2, right? Because negative 1 half times 2 is equal to negative 1. Two, uh, 2 over 2 negative sign is equal to negative 1, right? So now we're going to prove this with uh, generalizations and um, it's not too difficult, but um, we'll see. So the first thing you're going to want to do is draw right triangles. And because really that makes this a whole lot easier. So what we generally do to find slope is we, we call that the change, that's a little too big, um, the change in y values over the change in x values. So how would we, how would we denote this with, a, with right triangles? That, um, really that, those would be the hypoten hypotenuses of right triangles. So if we want to just drop this altitude, right, this line, and uh, this ray, and, sorry, segment, and let's call that E, okay? And then we'll go ahead and move it over here, oops, move it over to line L at point, um, let's call that B, right? Okay, now we have this right triangle, that's a right triangle. We have right triangle BEP, and BP is the hypotenuse. So the change in y values would be segment PE, right? And the change in x values would be segment BE, or B minus E, or P minus E, vice versa. Now, the other triangle we're going to want to draw is, um, let's do APD. So let's just call this arbitrary point up here A, and then P, and then let's call this arbitrary point here D. Okay, now drop altitude, drop across. Now we have hypotenuse of AP. And we still have change in y over change in x. So we still have our slope. So what we're really trying to say is that the change in y here, which is AD, AD over the change in x, DP, times multiplied by the change in y over change in x. Remember, that's M and M, slope. So here, change in y would be PE. Multiply or over um, the change in x, which is BE is equal to negative 1. That's what we want to prove. That's the same thing as up here. So now we're going to use generalizations to prove this. And um, let's go ahead and clear this slate. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is prove these triangles similar. And from eyeballing it, the best way to do that would be angle-angle similarity, I think. And how I'm going to do that is first say, okay, well, angle ADP is obviously equal to angle PEB, right? Um, through, uh, they're both 90 degrees, um, the right triangles. Now we're going to want to find another angle. I don't think we're going to be able to prove these angles, uh, but I will think we'll be able to prove that angle APD is equal to angle BEP, right? And how I think we'll do that is say, okay, well, since right here is bound to be, let me do that in a different color, since right here is bound to be a 90 degree angle, since this is a straight line, so it has to be 180, and right here is bound to be a 90 degree angle, then we can say that angle A, oh, sorry, this is supposed to be um, DP, A, no, APD, sorry, APD. Um, so then we could say that angle A, um, yeah, we could say that angle APD is equal to 90 degrees, right, triangles, minus angle D, P, B, right? Right here, right there, that angle, okay? And then that is also equal to angle B, P, E, right? Angle B, P, E, because th this diagram is getting kind of messy now, but B, P, E right here is 90 degrees minus D, P, B. I hope you can see that. Um, D, P, B is just the interim angle between these two 90 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to go on. Now we say these two are similar. So triangle um, 
ADP is similar to triangle um, B, B, P, E by angle, angle similarity, right? So now we can go ahead and set up our ratios. So let me clear this proof again. Um, okay, now we'll set up our ratios. And the first thing we're going to say is that um, we could say that, let's use uh, DA, right? Remember our similarity ratios? So DA right here, this line, over DP, this line, is equivalent to, uh, yeah, yeah, EB over EP. Remember, these are just corresponding parts of similar triangles. So DA right here, change in Y, EB right here, change in X, right, same, same, or, yeah, same thing. And then um, EP, change in Y, DP, change in X, okay? And we're going again, we want to prove this, M1 times M2 is equal to negative 1. So now we're going to say, okay, now we're going to just clean this up and multiply both sides by negative 1. So then we'll get negative DA over DP, negative DA over DP is equal to negative EB over EP. Now that still, they're still equivalent, right? And now the last thing that you want to do is multiply by um, EB over EP. Multiply both sides by EB over EP. Not negative EB over EP because we want the negative one on this side still. So let's go multiplied by EB over e, oops, EP. Same deal, multiplied by EB over EP. Now you have, um, section off a little spot up here. Now you have our final equivalency is that, um, again, what we're trying to prove in the beginning. EP, EB over EP multiplied by a negative DA over DP. Now space. I don't like drawing with uh, doing these videos with graphs because graphs take up a lot of space. Um, multiplied by a negative dA over dP because we multiplied both sides by negative one is equal to negative one because here EB canceled with EB, EP canceled with EP, and you're left with a negative one, right? So that's exactly what we're trying to prove because EB over EP is the change in in X over the change in Y, right? Same thing. Now, DA over DP, change in Y over the change in X. So this is just the negative reciprocal. Now, if you multiply those together, you're obviously going to get negative one because the triangles are similar, so the ratios of those sides are equal. So that's how you would prove with generalizations that slopes are, um, the product of two slopes of perpendicular lines are equal to negative reciprocals or negative one. And I think in the next video, we'll try to prove the inverse. We'll try to prove that some slopes that multiply negative 1 are slopes of perpendicular lines. And I'll see you in the next video.